the Rochester Downtown Development Authority meeting for Wednesday, April 20th, 2022. Madam Recording Secretary, the roll, please. Present. Here. 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 Yes. Present. Here. 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 Wow, we have this is full strength. I this love is, it. This is well, awesome. Wow, we're missing so, one. Yeah, um, we are. This is true, but this yeah. is you know it's this is good. So uh, thank you everybody for uh, coming this evening. We appreciate it. Uh, getting at the agenda, approval of the meeting minutes. We have two to approve this evening. Regularly scheduled meeting of last month, uh, March 16, 2022, and the closed session minutes of March 16, 2022. Board. We'll move. Motion by the mayor. I'll second it. Support by Vice Chair uh, LaPuma. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, audience comments. I think everybody's here for something on the agenda, but if not, Okay, very good. And uh, we'll get after it. All right, liaison reports. Uh, City Council, uh, Ms. Harrison, good evening. Good evening, thank you. I'm sorry, I'm still pulling, pulling up my notes. We had a pretty active meeting. We're going over, um, we're going over our uh, GovHR report for compensation packages. I think that was the main item on the agenda. So we're looking to be more competitive in an already very competitive employees market. So we actually decided at City Council to form a committee to review the findings from the Gov HR study and we'll, meet, we'll be making a determination, I, I believe by the end of next month, on how we want to move forward with that. We also reviewed a lighting ordinance that had been at the Planning Commission and then came back to Council um, and I believe we decided not to move forward with proposed changes at this Thank you for that. Any questions for our liaison? Uh, seeing none, thank you for that report. We appreciate it. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Ms. Trent. Hi. Uh, so the board will be, the Chamber Board will be adding two new board members and they will be announced next month. Um, we're also going to be having our next event, which is the 41st annual Rochester Area Prayer Breakfast on uh, May 5th at the Arena at Oakland University at uh, 569 Pier, uh, Pioneer Drive from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. You can register for that at rochestereareaprayerbreakfast.com. Author and speaker Ronnie McBrayer uh, will be the keynote and they, he is best known for his nationally syndicated column, Keeping the Faith. McBriar Brayer will share his thoughts on possibility and peace in a post-pandemic world. So as the chamber, last but not least, as the chamber, well, no, I got two more things. As the chamber continues its nonpartisan policy, we do have a legislative committee that will be hosting a few events for people to meet the candidates. So stay tuned for more information. As we all know, this is an election year. Um, so that also, last but not least, is the new executive director, Maggie Bobbitz, has been meeting with community leaders and she also met with Christy, right? Am I correct on this? <laughs> I'm just double checking, nod, <laughs> to discuss how to coordinate activities and help each organization promote each other and work together seamlessly, like we always have, but better, mo better, okay? <laughs> mo better together, all right. All right, fantastic, thank you for that update. Any questions for our uh, esteemed colleague? Uh, seeing none, moving forward, uh, Historical Commission, Mr. Senkowitz, good evening. From the uh, Historical Commission, uh, the Historical Commission created a resolution. It was uh, approved and submitted to uh, City Council that's uh, in reference to the Rochester Community School Building. From the Heritage Festival, it, it was also in town in the magazine, which was nice to see. That's May 28th and 29th. Many of the vendors and the participants will be setting up on uh, Friday, Friday afternoon. 
many of the participants that were in the past, not, not only from two years ago, but from several years ago, uh, will be participating this year, and we'll have many new participants. So it was very encouraging. I think the only disappointment was the breakfast that, uh, the morning breakfast that's also tied to the Lions Club, the car show, apparently won't be happening this year. We have uh, three dance teams so far. The, the uh, Shannon Irish Dance Academy will be there, the Second Street Dance Academy, and the Motor City uh, uh, Irish Dance Group. And we thank the Chiefs, both Chiefs, for their presence. Uh, the Fire Chief, of course, will have some of his trucks and his teams there, on, I believe, on Saturday. Chief. And, of course, the presence of the Police Department is always welcome in, in the park. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you for that Thank update. You. Good work as usual. Any questions for our liaison? Seeing none. Uh, Principal shop Shopping District, Mr. Haig. Principal Shopping District. Pretty much it's the same report I gave last <laughs> month. Um, everything's going Thursday and night. Markets coming in, movies in the moonlight. I can do the uh, Farmer's Market Sidewalk Sales, Rochester Post, Lanyap, Chris Kringle Market, Caroling in the City, Festival Trees, Taste of Fall, Plaid Friday, and Neighborhood Light Fight. Got it. Very, very little going on in town this summer from the yes, SDA, right? Yes, so, really. as usual, great work, and we appreciate that. <clears throat> uh, thank you for that quick update. Uh, moving forward, uh, general business agenda uh, 6A review of a proposed entertainment venue, uh, Glenn Wilhelm. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you for coming this evening. Hello. <laughs> My name is Glenn Wilhelm, um, and um, I'm We'll be proposing the um, entertainment venue um, that you see on the screen here. So I was going to give you a quick background of me and where I come from. And then Mark Dunbeck is the designer on the project. He's, he'll run through some slides. And, and really what we're looking for here today is we realize this isn't the governing body that we're going to be going to for approvals for permits and things. But we'd really like the DDA feedback of what concerns you might have going forward or if there's any areas that we haven't addressed that we need to address. We're just looking for a little, little feedback from the business community before we get too far down this road. Um, I've been in the restaurant entertainment business for about 35 years or so. My, my family operated the Premier Center back in Sterling Heights, which is 1,100 square foot, um, or 11, I'm sorry, 1,100 seat entertainment facility back in the late 80s. Um, I was the opening general manager with, um, with the Illich family with uh, Second City Comedy Theater, which was a 500 seat theater in, in downtown next to the Fox Theater. So I've been involved in, in this type of facility for a long time. Um, I've, I've owned and operated Younger's Irish Tavern for the past 15 years in downtown Romeo. For anybody that's not familiar, it's a two-story operation. The first floor is a restaurant. second floor is a 250-seat showroom theater, cabaret-style theater. Um, all pre-sold ticketed events, everything is sold online. Um, no walk-up type business. It's all uh, ticketed, you pick your seat um, type, of, type of venue. So there's a lot of similarities what we're what we're looking to propose to do in downtown Rochester. I was very um, five five to six years ago we started selling all our tickets online versus any walk up sales, and it was really a little bit of an eye shocker to me to see that in any month we were running about 35 percent of our um, ticket sales were coming from Rochester, Rochester Hills, and Oakland Township. That was a much bigger number than I thought. I thought we were pulling a lot more from Washington Shelby then we were pulling much more from Rochester Rochester Hills than I thought so I've been keeping my eye on downtown Rochester for a number of years for any type of facility that uh, that opened up that um, that would work for what we're thinking about doing and um, the shoe end became available um, there's not very many buildings that would work for the type of entertainment facility that we're talking about so it's not a uh, not an easy find I guess to, to, to find a facility that, that would work for what we're talking about doing. So I'm going to introduce Mark in here, and he's going to get you going on a slideshow. And then we'd really like any feedback that you guys have once we get through this slide here. Okay. Thank you. Um, again, like Glenn said, we're looking for any type of feedback in regards to what we're presenting here. So I'll just walk you through. Uh, like Glenn mentioned, uh, this is an entertainment venue. Uh, in a building that I think a lot of you are very familiar with. Uh, this building has historical relevance to the Rochester community. As you can see, uh, way back in 1854 is when this building was constructed. So 
as you can see the timeline there, um, Rochester wasn't even a village yet until 1869. So this building has been existing here at that location um, way before uh, this was even a village. Um, and you can see as the years went by, um, this, is, this is a shot way back when, the peace and tranquility of, of the days passed. Uh, Walnut Boulevard, you can see the Harris Fountain there when it was truly a, uh, a boulevard. And so then through the years, you can see the transition of, of the building and the similarities that you can see throughout the, uh, the years with the gable roof. Um, and so it's taken uh, different appearances, facade through the years, but, you know, it's the, the, the same building. And so this is the current exterior aesthetics. And then like Glenn had mentioned, um, a little bit of background in regards to who we are, right? Oakland, uh, the, he didn't mention anything about the Oakland Kitchen Bar. Uh, he did mention about Youngers, but the Oakland is a sister supporting um, venue that uh, is under the same management, right? So, so Glenn owns that. And what what that venue is, uh, those who aren't familiar with it, is top tier restaurant tier, um, catering to world class service and, and guest experiences. So that's kind of the uh, aesthetics of the interior, and who they're catering to, uh, high end luxury minded clientele. And then uh, Glenn did mention about Youngers and explained what that venue is, uh, live entertainment, and uh, well accustomed to, you know, booking top-notch talent and acts. And so our vision for this venue here on Walnut is to blend, you know, best of both worlds from the Oakland top-level guest service and what we bring from Younger's top-tier entertainment experience. And then, um, for those of you who are familiar a little bit about uh, 20 Front Street, uh, very, we're going to be very different than this, but this is just showing uh, basically the communal type of uh, facility that that is that, uh, in Lake Orion. And so the main takeaway from here is you we'll be bringing an intimate performance experience to, to the guests. And then also what we'd like to do is fulfill the DDA's uh, com and community's desired need. So back in September, um, there was a visioning session and uh, the highest priority there was uh, entertainment venue. As you can see, top ideas, uh, entertainment venue, uh, performance space, multi-use space, um, and then online, the polls were showing exactly the same thing, that the number one want from the community was an entertainment venue. And so our vision for the exterior aesthetics is to transform what the shoe in is now to something more in the likes of this, where it, uh, brings up the appearance to more of a classic chic, chic type of uh, appearance and, you know, uh, beautifies the, the neighborhood. So this is the, the view from the adjoining neighborhood, so from the back street. So again, <coughs> one level of improvement. But what we'd like to also do is enhance that even more uh, by doing something very similar to uh, what was done with the Chapman House. So a visual barrier from the neighborhood. And then in regards to the interior aesthetics, this is uh, basically just showing Again, our vision as to the level of, of more of a 
higher end luxury um, focused interior. And again, the service is going to be, uh, you know, the more on the high higher end, high, mid lux type of approach here. Yeah, and catering to to thirties and plus. So this, you know, it's not a dance bar, it's or a dance club. It's a uh, entertainment venue, and like. Glenn had mentioned pre-ticket, you know, pre-sales on the tickets, so no walk-up sales. It's all, you know, going to be well organized and uh, this level. And then, in regards to the neighborhood, like I had mentioned before, uh, addressing. <coughs> Some of the green space so you can see what it looks like now and then what we like to do is go ahead and get that the green barrier there um, to the to the west of the building and then this also leads into how we'd like to control traffic so with that uh, introducing one ways and traffic flows so that uh, and, and right turn onlys so that we're diverting uh, as much traffic as possible away from the adjoining neighborhood. And then we also see this as a, uh, a positive to the city in regards <coughs> to trying to increase the revenue generation you know, to the parking structure that's that's right adjacent to the venue. So our goal would be to to go ahead and drive the majority of the parking to the city parking structure, um, increasing you know the the potential revenue for that structure itself. And then in regards to noise management. Um, just because we, you know we want to make certain that there aren't any concerns um, for you know, the adjoining neighborhood and whatnot, um, we've got a, a very we've got experience in in the soundproofing and acoustical management in our other venues, and so what what the goal here would be is to completely. Um, enclose the sound within the walls of the venue, you know, meeting all of the, the sound ordinances that are that's in the section 2301 of the zoning code. And we've, we've got the experience of, of managing noise levels uh, and the ability to do that. And again, this is a, a venue that we will not be having outdoor any outdoor entertainment or the sound will not be uh, outside. Uh, and you can see where the stage would be located on this, uh, where the arrow is. Any sound would be going through the rest of the building and towards away from, from the neighbor, adjoining neighborhood. That's all that I have. <laughs> At least for now. Um, so yep. uh, thanks for the presentation. We appreciate it. Um, so I'm going to open up the uh, discussion here to the board to uh, provide some opinions. Once again, this is not in any way, shape, or form a, um, you know, a request. Or this, this happens at uh, planning and, and council. This is just an informational feedback. So um, anything that we discuss here is strictly sort of personal opinion and not a, a general opinion of the board of the DDA. But sure. you, know, you can draw the conclusions that you draw from it. Um, but with that, I open up to the board. Um, Mr. Haig. Um, what night the days of operation nights of operation would you have so we would do a Thursday Friday Saturday for sure um, but you know you, you can always there's always touring groups that are that are uh, traveling that we might catch on a Tuesday or Wednesday uh, sometimes if they're on their way to Chicago you might get a, 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 a 
an act that um, that can fit you in on a Tuesday or Wednesday. You wouldn't normally be able to get um, a traveling, a touring act like that. You could throw it on those days. But it would be every Thursday, Friday, Saturday for sure. Okay. One more question. What mm -hmm. time would the venue start? So what we do in Romeo, and there's no reason to think we do anything different, is we do uh, the, the venue opens up at 7 o'clock, show starts at 8 o'clock, and, and, and the show does two 45-minute sets with about a 20-minute break. So it's a, about a two-hour show. So I don't see any reason why we would differentiate that here versus uh, what we do in Romeo. So like 7 to 9? Yeah, a little bit later. That, well, the show would start at yeah. about 8. And then uh, about 8 to 10. Eight, eight, the, the doors eight, open yeah. at 7. For people to start coming in. Right, show starts at 8 and, you know, about 10, 10, 15-ish. Okay. No encores, right, Paul? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <I> just <kidding. laughs> uh, Anything else? Um, <clears throat> what do you think about the neighborhood impact here? Have you... Um, you, I, I see you've taken some steps to affect, not affect the neighborhood impact. What about parking effects, um, people trying to park in the neighborhood? So, you know, there's a few different ways that we've um, thought about addressing it. Because it's a pre-ticketed event, we have the ability to, when we sell, send the email them their ticket, to address this is where you should be parking, right on the, right on the email that has their ticket on it that they're going to print off and bring to us. So. Um, that gives us a unique opportunity to, to direct them to the to the parking structures, um, you know, away from neighborhoods and things like that. So we'll address whatever needs to be done. We, we've addressed some of those issues by the way that we want to construct the parking lot, the ins and the outs and the one ways, um, to alleviate anyone even going near the neighborhoods. Um, so, but we we'll be more than willing to make any changes necessary. But because we're doing those things. In advance, I don't really anticipate any problems. And the structure is literally right across the street from us. So, yeah, And then you got Pain Creek Center, too, that buffers. So, no, I thought your directional uh, changes were good. Right. So. All right, that's it. Yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, Eric. Uh, first to the gentleman black, uh, I like your haircut. So, <laughs> solidarity, brother. Um, have, have you guys um, looked at any sort of impact study with regards to your existing uh, businesses? Like how many people are actually parking to how many people use a transportation service like Uber, things like that? We haven't done any studies with it. You talk about in Romeo? Correct. We haven't done any studies uh, about it. And, and um, <clears throat> we really don't have, you know, parking is, a, is an issue in any downtown. And Romeo is no different than, 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 than Rochester. Um, but we haven't, it really hasn't become a, um, we haven't had any neighborhood issues in Romeo where people are parking into the neighborhoods and that causes, causing an issue or a complaint on us. It just hasn't happened. Um, but it's an interesting thought. I, I don't know how many of our people are Ubering in. I, I just don't, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Because yeah. my thought was, obviously people are going to be having libations, have a good time. I, I don't know if Ubering would be more popular. <laughs> And then I think the other part, and maybe this is an opportunity for the city, if there's a way that we could start some sort of, hey, pay for your parking uh, directly through the city online, um, it might allow us to, you know, instantly get those funds, even if they're using it or not. Um, and also, it, you know, it, it, I think it would strengthen a partnership between, you know, your company and the city. Sure. Um, you know, would you guys be willing to, you know, have a portal into the city's website to, you know, instantly go into uh, for patrons to park in the parking deck? We're, we're open to anything that the okay. city would uh, look at. Um, James and I had talked early on about maybe including parking into the deck on your ticket so that when you print it out, you've got some scan. I don't, I'm not sure if the parking structure has the ability to do it, but if they did, we could prepay something. You get a scan along with your ticket, and you can scan it right into the parking structure. That way it's prepaid, and we know where it's <coughs> So we're open to those things. There's a fantastic. Uh, anything else, sir? Nope. I'm okay, great. Uh, Marilyn? Hi. Um, yeah. So just a little bit about this noise ordinance, um, uh, sound ordinance, I mean. Um, is it an older one when maybe this much noise wasn't being taken in consideration? I mean, because you're, you're talking about the wood it was wood walls. They're not brick, you know, so that's, that's an issue. So you guys know how to make yeah. this soundproof, even if it isn't as, as so, uh, maybe yeah. the soundproofing ordinance isn't as solid. I'm, I'm not questioning. I, I am, though, kind of sure. wondering how sure. soundproofing is this ordinance versus what you're going right. to do. So the whole front of the big 
the, the building is a brick for brick. For oh stock. yeah, yeah. So oh, that's right. Because so they put. Okay, got it. And yeah. Is that not big. Okay. Um, but we, in Romeo, very similar thing. Except in Romeo, the the um, showroom is on the second floor, and I literally have um, tenants on both sides of the of my exterior walls that are living there, butted up against us. We did a significant soundproofing and sound abatement inside the building. It's the sound absorption material that we put in there just for that purpose and not to, not to have any issues. In this location here, we have the advantage of we've got a lot of space between us and the neighbors. They're not butting up against the, literally the walls that we have in Romeo. And the other thing that, that we did a little research on was, you know, School of Rock has right next door to us. They do their bands and they do the, and mm -hmm. we didn't, we uh, did some research and we didn't see any noise complaints or any issues with them. And they're in there playing as well without the sound abatement that we're going to be putting in. So we're certainly going to um, abide by any ordinances. We're not going to violate any, any sound ordinance codes. We'll do whatever it takes to, to get us there. Um, but we've got some experience in doing it because okay. we don't want to be a bad neighbor. We, 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 that's any, not anything sure. we have any interest in doing is upsetting the neighborhood. Well, good. And one more thing. I, it's a positive note. I do like the idea of a natural barrier of trees. Mm -hmm. Native trees are even better uh, as opposed to a brick wall. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, Tanya. Okay. I have three questions. Sure. One is what type of entertainment are you bringing in? Are these like big name uh, what what is the entertainment that comes so, in? So um, that's one of the variables until you really get into and start selling <laughs> tickets and know what direction the market's going to go. What I I've been a resident of Rochester Hills for 25 years. My kids all went to Adams. Uh, you know, I've been around this area for a long time. What I really see working here is comedy, dueling pianos, throwing some tribute shows in there. And when you're talking about the level of entertainment, for a facility of this size, what you kind of deal with when you're dealing with the booking agencies is, with a with the kind of square footage we're talking here, you either get artists that are building their career on their way up, or ones that have, have maybe peaked out and they're kind of on their way down. When I talked about um, <laughs> some of the some of the uh, the touring dates that are available, you'll get I'll get a call from an agent. They'll say, Hey, I, I got a uh, um, a booking in Cleveland for my guy on Saturday, and they're in Chicago on Wednesday. I got two days here in the middle. They're swinging by. Make me an offer on the date. So um, that's the type of. But, but you never know who you're going to get. So we would do the Thursday, Friday, Saturdays every week for sure, and then throw in those dates whenever they become available with a with a touring guy that happen to be going by. Okay, and then how many people do you see? You mentioned square footage, but I don't remember if you said how many seats. And so then we haven't finished the interior layout design on it, but with the square footage that we're talking about, my anticipation is in, in the 300, 350 range. And then that leads me to the last question, which was on average, how many people are you bringing into your other facilities? Like uh, you're anticipating about 350. So the, the, in Romeo, the showroom seats 250. It sells <coughs> out 90 percent of the times that we do it. Oh, okay, that's good. That's impressive. Thank you. The other thing that uh, that I didn't mention earlier that I meant to is our intent is to really um, be on auxiliary draw or some of the other businesses that are already here. We're not going to be putting a kitchen in. We're not going to be a full-service restaurant. We're not doing any of those things like we're doing in Romeo. This is going to be an entertainment facility with, with beverages only. Um, uh, I'm hoping that, you know, that we're going to be a draw to the city that's going to augment the restaurants that are already in town. And, um, and that's really one of the draws in Romeo is people want to park once, eat, go to a show. Same type of thing here. There's a lot of great restaurants in Rochester that are already here that we could be an entertainment draw to bring people to town and, and, uh, and augment them rather than compete with them. That's good. Thanks. Fantastic. Ms. Harrison. Thank you. Thank you for coming and sharing this with us sure. this evening. I'm wondering when you say beverages, are you looking for a liquor license or 20 Front Street, I think, just does coffee and tea? Yeah, no, a liquor license would be imperative for this project to go forward. Anybody else? Hmm, okay. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, Roger, please. I was waiting for my turn. Oh, yeah. No, no. I just, just looking around. I didn't see you. Sorry. I, I, I continue I to be a little concerned about the sound. I know I, because I know we've got neighbors and houses that in the summer months have their windows open outside. And, sure. Was that building, will, will you have any windows that will open in that building? Like, 
somebody wants to sit there and it's hot. Our, our intent isn't, in, 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 isn't to replace the windows. There's no reason those windows will be open on a, uh, ever, ever. I mean, we wouldn't ever open unless we were airing it out during the day or something. But they would never be open when we were operating. Okay. So you are you going to have windows that open, or they're not going to open? We're, we, we're not going to change the windows that are already there. Okay. And I, um, some of them, them I think, do open, but I don't think there's any I, reason I, for us I, to I open. couldn't remember that. I know some of them don't. Yeah. Um, I, I, being the sounds of it, I wish you could move that building on the other side of Main Street where you're not backed up to the, those right. neighborhoods because I, I uh, you know, I'm always concerned about yeah. noise and people where you park, and even though you don't want them parking in those streets, people do. And it becomes an annoyance and a lot of problems in the neighborhood sometimes. Right. Um, uh, I had another question. I'm trying to come up with it here. Um, can I come back? You may. Absolutely. 100%. Good. Uh, anybody else? What oh, is your average ticket price? Like, what do you plan on charging for? So, the, you know, there, it's a sliding scale depending on what quality of entertainment, what level we're in. So when we're doing, uh, say, dueling piano shows or, or most of our comedians are in the 25 to $30 range, um, you know, we do have some national touring acts that come in that you'll get into the, into the 45 50 55 range right now. Oh, you forget. Remember? Okay, very good. Please. Uh, I, I wanted to, I didn't actually want to address this to you, but I wanted to call attention. And goals and objectives, I had brought up the fact that that block, I thought, ought to uh, have some screening. And, and I thought they did, a, in your drawing, you had a picture of that where you screened off that street because that is residential, that whole street behind there, even though that uh, we have a uh, the art museum or art uh, building there. But... Uh, uh, you know, that was a good example because they put a sidewalk down there and they shrubbed it all the way down there. And the city owns that land. I think they own a 10-foot strip there, that, that land where you, where you put that in there, I believe, owned, is all owned by the city. So I, I wish you to keep that in mind and maybe we could urge that on down the rest of the block one day to do that. For sure. Cool. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, so from my perspective, really a few things, um, uh, it, it ticks a lot of boxes for us. Um, just for me as, uh, as, a, as a resident of the community, um, and you're, I'm a little bit older than your target demographic, but uh, if you bring uh, Blues Axe in, I will definitely be there, no problem. Um, so uh, having the parking structure right across the street, that is an added bonus. I think as you guys were talking about it, uh, and I don't know if our little scanner reader can do it, but you, just a QR code on your phone you hold up there. I was just in Milwaukee. My son goes to Marquette. We were in there, and you literally hold it up to the thing, and then it opens up, and you prepay for parking along with your ticket and everything else. So uh, that'd be fantastic. So there's a lot of uh, boxes of support for the city. Uh, my question with food was answered. You answered it before I even got a chance to ask. ask. So that's great because now all of a sudden we're bringing a draw to the community where the restaurants – which we have restaurant tours up on this dais this evening, um, you know, th those businesses will benefit from that. Plus the exposure of folks coming into Rochester that may not have been here before, which I right. would find shocking, but uh, everybody pretty much knows who we are and where we're at. Um, and also, too, I think there's probably some really good opportunities for partnership with the Royal Park Hotel, um, especially given the acts coming through town. Um, I was thinking of sort of, uh, we have a farm just west of Mount Pleasant. I drive past the casino up there all the time, and I always know what's coming to Pine Knob because those guys are either just going to be at the casino or just, you know, afterwards. So um, uh, I, I think from a uh, practical matter, the uh, things that you're going to run up against are going to be the things that were brought up this evening, and that's going to happen no matter where you are. The bonus of this particular thing, at least from my perspective, is the fact that there's not a ton of residential right there. You've got the buffer of the um, Paint Creek Center of the Arts. Um, so I think that'll also, you know, work in your favor as well. Um, but just be mindful. I'm sure that you've done this before, right? So there's, uh, you know, you're, you're well coached. You've got good counsel uh, who has done a good job of helping you sort of point out these things that you're going to run up against. Sure. Um, but uh, I think for me, the big thing for me was uh, the major box that was checked for us from our visioning session. I think that was very important um, uh, because to a person, I was in that room, I'm in that picture that you, that you put up there, as were most of the people on the stage. Um, but, you know, having that draw is something that people have been after, and that was not our first time. That was actually on our last one as well. So uh, th that's been a consistent theme for 
you know, I was on city council here for 12 years and I've been on DDA for, I don't know, it feels like forever, but whatever. But it always has come up as one of those things that, that folks have wanted. So um, I think there's a lot of things in your favor. I think you're going to deal with sort of the human issues, right? Um, with respect to traffic flow and all that stuff, we always defer to chiefs and make sure that, you know, you got windows you can jump out of and, you, you know, the cars aren't uh, doing whatever they got to do, right? Um, and so that's planning commission and that's council. But uh, I think on balance for me, just as a resident, nothing to do with DDA. I think this is, uh, you guys have a pretty good idea here, as long as you um, are mindful of sort of the um, objections, which I think the folks have brought up. So uh, from that, if there's no other, oh. Yeah. Um, I think you guys obviously have a proven track record of cool venues. I've been to the Oakland personally. I um, think it's awesome. Uh, not the other, not the Youngston or Youngster in, in, in Romeo. So I think our city needs something like this. I loved what I saw. It looks super hip, super cool to me and my kind of demographic and my vibe. So I just want to thank you guys for, you know, your willingness to invest in our city. I think it's going to be awesome. I appreciate that. Thanks for stopping by the Oakland. Yeah. yeah for sure. Yep. All right, guys. All right, thank you so much yeah, for coming. I appreciate your, your comments and your time. I really do. You bet. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. All right. All right, the bar is high for our True. tour uh, detrail event presentation. I guess Clara is pinch hitting this evening, so welcome. Um, thank you. I'm, my name is Clara Pinkham. I'm on the Pink Creek Trail Friends Group. I'm on the Board of Directors and I'm the Secretary Treasurer of that, that group. Um, if anybody's not familiar with the Friends of the Pink Creek Trail, we're an organization that provides support to the Pink Creek Trailways Commission. Um, we help with projects on the trail, activities. Uh, we've been involved with the Moo Tree Pollinator Garden that's right behind King's Cove just uh, north of the Tinkin Trail, trailhead. Um, doing some repairs on the, on the trail, the fix-it stations, the bike fix-it stations, we've done those. So that's kind of who the, the group is. Um, what, we, what we're just asking for support and any feedback for, we do two main events a year, uh, one in Rochester, usually a bike ride, of, uh, the Labor Day Bridge Walk is in Rochester. Um, on Labor Day, we start at the park. And then we do another event in Lake Orion at the other end of the trail. This year, it's the Tour de Trail. It is on <coughs> National Trails Day, which is Saturday, June 4th. Um, it's a combined biking, running, and walking event. It'll be based in Children's Park in that area. Um, we have, so the event, I think that there's information in your packets about it. Um, Got it. Yes, there's some yep. information about the trail, it, uh, about the event. It kind of highlights the things that we're doing. There's the walk, bike, run section of it that's a $10 registration fee for, and we're hoping to get families uh, with kids uh, biking and walking and running. We'll have an expo set up in the parking lots at uh, by Children's Park with food, food trucks. We'll have a beer tent. Uh, that'll be separate from the whole expo according to uh, you know, what we have to follow for the law on that one. Um, there's a bicycle rodeo that will be set up in the uh, art, the Pink Creek Center, not Pink Creek, that's the other one, the Lake Orion Art Center in the parking lot with kind of a rodeo set up with an obstacle course for kids to ride through and it's promoting bicycle safety, bicycle handling. Um, Lids for Kids, the group out of Ascension um, that does the bicycle helmets, they'll be at the uh, May 7th Farmer's Market passing out bicycle helmets for children. They'll be there as well um, with some helmets for the kids. So the, the information, there is a copy of our flyer in your information packet with the QR code that'll take people to the map of the trail and the, the Trail um, website, the commission's website. Um, registration is through Eventbrite, which uh, is live now for people to register. Um, people, so for from the city of Rochester, what we're looking for, um, because the ride can come all the way down to Rochester, we have a coupon. We'll be putting out a passport with a coupon book. Um, 
vendors can purchase and put out uh, a coupon in that book. We have a pretty good track record with those. We've done them before. Uh, we give people until, uh, sorry, on that date. Um, I think sometime in the, during the summer that they have until to use those coupons. But people can also, businesses can also do ads. We do have sponsorship levels for the event. Those levels are on your handout with a flyer, mm -hmm. anywhere from $50 up to the presenting sponsors of, of 500 We do have uh, a handful of presenting sponsors on board already. Um, Griffin Claw Brewery is one of them. Um, Cookies and Cream in downtown Lake Orion will be doing a great deal with this it's in the backyard. Um, Haney Insurance and m and Graphics in Lake Orion. Those are our presenting um, a sponsor. Some of them are in kind, some of them are a combination of cash and in kind. Um, so we'd like support from the, DD, the DDA in Rochester for, to be, we'd be asking businesses, but we're also looking for sponsorships uh, for the event to go forward. Uh, well, it, it is going forward, but <laughs> looking for um, support and any questions or feedback from, from you folks. Okay, thank you, Madam Director. And thank you. I know in my communication with Lewis, you indicated that the coupon answer is a free opportunity for business. Is that correct? Um, you know that I need to I would need to ask oh, them. The, yeah. The, excuse me. Yes. Okay. Full disclaimer, uh, Mike Wan and Louis Cario okay, met with me for about an hour about this event. And yes, the coupons are free, okay. but you can place an ad. Yeah, that's true. And um, I am a friend, and I have a mile mm -hmm. sponsor on the trail. And I'm very much supportive of this. And that I am, I think I'm a member of the Friends. I don't think it costs anything. You just, yeah. So that's free too. <laughs> just a friend. Just, yeah. I'm a friend. I'm a friend. We're all friends. Yeah, yeah. We're all, all friends. friends. I'm a friend and a bigger friend. But yes, I think it's a wonderful event. I know that, um, it's okay. Just leave it. It's okay. Yeah, thanks. So, um, they're also going to be sending people to the gardens. So uh, they're, the gardens meaning I the I knew meetings. you had an ulterior motive. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> the butterfly garden. A full disclaimer, they do, uh, Louis Cario and the Moutry Garden, they were going to show yes. some of the, yeah. yeah. And no, we do you plan to have um, volunteers at the Moutry Garden to direct people and tell them about the project? Mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping that it's looking good by then. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, well, just recovering from winter right year. now. Yeah, you'll have some plants. Yeah. <laughs> the spring ones. Very good. Any other questions? Any questions? Um, in terms of support from us, are you just looking for us to uh, get the word out for you? And, Somewhat, and yes, please. Okay. And, and just feedback or any questions that, that you might all have for Well, I happen to know a really good marketing team that could probably get the word out for you to the businesses in town. So we'll make sure that we do that for you. Thank you. And okay. I, um, I know that a few of the members have plans to um, ask some of the folks in town. Great. Businesses awesome. In town. Madam Director. Um, just for clarification, just for any um, organization that approaches us, which there are quite a few, we'll send out things for free opportunities. We generally don't send out sponsorship opportunities because when things come from us, then number one, they think we're endorsing or supporting okay. even. Mm -hmm. And number two, a lot of times they support something with a sponsorship and then they think they supported us. And since yeah, us, okay. DD and PSD are very yeah. supported by sponsorships, <coughs> then we go back to the other and say, oh, well, I just sponsored X. Like, well, that wasn't us, but it doesn't come across that way. Got it. So that's why I was making the clarification okay. about the free advertising, because sure. we're happy to put that out. And what I, when I was emailing back and forth to Louie, I suggested that if he wanted to approach different businesses on his own, that would probably be okay. advisable. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I, I yeah. do believe that. Thanks for that. All right, we will get the we'll get the gentle word out. How's yeah, that? We will. The <laughs> okay. pollinators has the same policy, so the Rochester pollinators will also push it out Very through good. our channels as well. Very good. Any other questions? Okay. All right. I'll see some of you okay. there. Thank you Thank so much you for your presentation much. this evening. We appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. You bet. Uh, dementia friendly community presentation. Um, Miss Barry. Good evening. Welcome. Yeah, no, I know. I walked out of the house and I was like, oh, this is not great. But it's going to be 80 on Sunday. So, right? you know. That's what I said. <laughs> so while she's pulling it up, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Sarah Berry. I'm a nurse um, with Beaumont Health. I've been a nurse for about 12 years. Thank you. And um, my specialty <coughs> practice is adult gerontology. So I'm a certified clinical nurse specialist and I'm the geriatric program manager at Troy. 
Um, Dementia Friendly America kind of came across my desk during my work with Alzheimer's Association. And um, one of the dementia friendly communities that I'll talk about as an example is Dementia Friendly Saline. So the gentleman who started Dementia Friendly Saline and I have been collaborating. And when I discussed this with him, I thought, wow, this would really be a great thing for our communities in Metro Detroit who have this wonderful like Main Street communities, Rochester, Lake Orion, Oxford, those type of areas. And so um, we only have two dementia friendly communities in the state. One is Saline and one is Grand Rapids. I'm sorry this looks really small, but these were just some uh, statistics and facts that I think might have been included in your packet. But just to summarize them, um, we know the population is getting older. We know that by 2050, we're going to have about 150% increase of those over the age of 65. I'm sure you're all familiar with your area and you have several um, extended care facilities, several memory care facilities in this area. Um, we know the average age is about 81, so people are living longer. And then a couple of statistics about those living with dementia. So we know about 25% of those who are caring for somebody with dementia are actually a little bit embarrassed to admit that their loved one has dementia because of the stigma that goes along with that. So that impacts their quality of life. As well as there are some caregivers who just don't tell the person that they've been diagnosed with dementia, which can cause some issues and stress as well. The Michigan initiatives that are associated with Dementia Friendly America, so in the Michigan Adult and Aging Services Annual Reports for 2019 and 2020, which carry over into 2023, um, state plan goal number one is uh, Governor Whitmer actually applied for Michigan to be an age-friendly state, which falls in with Dementia Friendly America. We're one of five states to commit to being age-friendly. And then state plan goal number two is supporting caregivers in the community who are caring for those um, with dementia. So it falls perfectly with this initiative. And we know there's support from the state for that. So what is Dementia Friendly America? These are communities within um, the United States who are informed, so educated, and provide safe and respectful um, business care, business practices, organization practices to individuals with dementia. This is also supportive of those families and caregivers for those who have dementia as well. Um, there is a video, but in respect for your time, I won't show you the video. You are welcome to watch it. It's on the Dementia Friendly website, but it just gives you a quick introduction into the initiative. Age Friendly America is a different initiative from AARP and the World Health Organization, but they um, definitely go together. So Age Friendly America is kind of the umbrella. It doesn't focus on one specific disease state, such as dementia, but it just focuses on making the community livable for all of those different ages, including those um, age 65 and older. So this is a comparison. Again, I apologize that it's very small. But as you can see, there's eight objectives for age-friendly, and there's about 10 for dementia-friendly, and they cross over. And so the reason I'm showing this to you is because the recommendation is if one of the communities would like to go for either dementia friendly or age friendly, they recommend that you go for both at the same time. And the reasoning being is the objectives are very similar. So if you're going to do the work to become one type of community, you might as well do the work to become the other because it's very similar and it'll cross over. And one of the benefits of doing that is when you're getting businesses on board, different organizations on board, instead of being confusing and saying, this time we're going for dementia friendly, and then in a couple years, we're kind of going to do the same thing and go for age friendly, you might as well get both designations, have one committee, um, and do the education all at once. So some examples up there that cross over, um, you know, social participation, the dementia friendly practices, they have... Um, the businesses and financial services that will help them maintain being able to attend those businesses that ties right into social participation with age friendly just an example of a crossover so the benefits of becoming dementia friendly or age friendly this allows those who have contributed to this community for so long who have lived here for so long to actually stay and still be a part of the community um, it allows caregivers to feel comfortable living in the community while caring for this person either in, at home or maybe the person is still living independently and therefore improved quality of life for both the person with dementia and the caregiver. Um, steps to becoming uh, dementia friendly or age friendly. So this is very intimidating because it talks about like over several years. And when I had discussions with the gentleman who started Dementia Saline, he said, Forget all that, you can do it in about three to six months. So if you have a committee who's really committed, um, you could do 
what you need to do to get both dementia friendly and age friendly which with about six months to a year depending on which timeline that you'd want so to summarize what you would need to do um, you'd have to form a team and the team would need to be those who um, are obviously part of the community the uh, recommendation is that the team is ran by somebody who lives in the community who is maybe caring for someone with dementia so they have that firsthand experience um, providing education is the next step. I've done education for uh, the fire department here and for the police department here. I am more than willing to offer my services to do education for the businesses or for the different organizations. Dementia Friendly Saline's education was about 45 minutes for um, all of their businesses and you can kind of tailor it to the different businesses whether it be a coffee shop, whether it be a bank, um, whether it be a police department. And that education just focuses on recognition and things they can do to make their specific business more friendly with, to those with dementia. Um, recommendations that go along with that education for those businesses might be small changes they might need to do. So for example, um, if, have you guys seen those like black carpets when you walk into a business where you wipe your feet? Right, it's like this dark black carpet. <coughs> so to somebody with dementia, walking in and seeing that big <coughs> black carpet might look like a hole to them and they might be scared to walk into the business. So one of the recommendations might be when doing education for that business is you should get some carpeting that has patterns so that somebody with dementia can look and tell the difference on what they're stepping on. It's that simple of changes. This isn't you know tearing down walls and doing things like that. Um, and then obviously applying for both. So there is an application for both. Dementia Friendly Community application is very simple. I think you might have included it in the packet. It's a couple of pages. You write a couple of paragraphs and a letter of commitment. Age Friendly is a little bit more um, complex, <laughs> but still doable. So once you apply, if you are accepted, the maintenance, um, I believe it's every couple of years, but you would just need to send a report to say, this is what we're still doing. Um, these are the initiatives we are moving forward and um, kind of doing a report on what what your city is still doing to keep up with dementia friendly and age friendly. <clears throat> so I do want to show you um, the dementia friendly website for Saline is up here, but I do want to show you this interesting presentation that um, the gentleman who who started dementia friendly Saline put together. Um, his name is Jim. He started this because his wife um, has dementia and she's been dealing with it for some time. So some examples of what those um, areas did. So this is uh, a dementia-friendly library, for example. So they said for patrons with dementia, they were allowed to make appointments with the librarian so they could actually be one-on-one -on -one helping them. Um, they changed their signage to make it a little bit more clear, to make the print bigger. Um, they did books for reading out loud for patients and or participants. And I apologize if I say patient, patients all the time. It's because I'm a nurse and everybody's a patient. I mean participants. Um, they did audiobooks. So, um, and this was in uh, Illinois. So this was just an example. Home Depot, I believe this one is in Wyoming. Uh, they trained all of their staff to be uh, trained in good dementia interaction, and so they were ready for extra assistance. So just very small uh, changes that people had made. They did relaxed shopping hours, for example, at Publix. So um, these are just <coughs> the little changes that were made to become a dementia-friendly or age-friendly community. And the reason I point this out to you is that it doesn't have to be anything complex. <coughs> so, I went through that really quickly. We did. Sorry. <laughs> Madam Director. Just to give a little bit of color on this, Sarah, thank you so much. Yeah. So, um, this program is actually brought to my attention by the Chiefs, that's why they're here joining us tonight, <coughs> that this is something that they might be undertaking for the city, and because there's a business component, they wanted me to meet with Sarah Sidney chiefs to talk about what they'd be doing with this program. Uh, thanks, Christy. With um, City Council, you might remember we uh, brought to you uh, an agreement to where we were looking to form a partnership with Beaumont Hospitals. And this is a direct result of it. The educational opportunity that Sarah brought to the police and the fire department um, and some training uh, on dementia was one of the first sets of trainings that we've taken advantage of. And uh, when we get called to the police or the fire to a person's home, we now look at things differently on how we work with these patients. Um, we actually had a, a lab that we had to go through that was very expertly managed by Sarah and her team, and we were all kind of um, 
our senses were altered either by spikes in our shoes or gloves or hearing and, and, and so what it was was really trying to represent what a person with dementia is going through and maybe why they act the way they did. Um, and so a, a person with dementia sometimes might be described as being violent. And, and we've heard that conversation. We've actually responded <coughs> to violent dementia patients. But I'll tell you, um, after we took the training, we went to our violent dementia person over at Sunrise Assisted Living. <coughs> and we applied the things that we learned that Sarah's team showed us. And you know what? That person wasn't violent. Because we would approach the patient, sorry, fire patients, but <laughs> we would approach the patient from the side. And we didn't realize that the vision of that dementia patient, as dementia let, let in, ended up more being tunnel vision, right? So if you think about yourself of when you're startled from somebody to the side, and you thrash out because you don't know what it is, that's exactly what that person was doing to us, right? And so we changed the way we approached her. We've now approached her from the front. And we also learned a technique called hand over hand. Which, which, is, which gives us an opportunity to kind of control and steer the person. So this person, who that we've always had to have the police with us because of their violence, turned into the nicest little old lady you'd ever want to meet because of the training that we got. And because, uh, one of the things that we talked about, because we have such an inclusive uh, city of Rochester, supported by a council and the DDA, we thought that why not keep Rochester at the front and take a look at providing this type of training. Let maybe Chief Steve can add to some of that. No, I agree with what's been said. It's a great opportunity. And I think the biggest thing is to be able to get out into the business community and, and, and to the public at large and give them confidence. A lot of times we get calls, and, and the, the statistics are spot on. This is a situation where we get calls, not infrequently, uh, people that are combative at home, someone shows up at a business and they're just out of sorts and it may be not because of any other problem but just uh, because of their mental status based on uh, some type of dementia issue. Um, we have people that wander away and, and show up someplace and you know a business person will call and, and in a panic, you know, I have somebody here, I, they don't know where they're going, they don't know what's going on. If we can give this type of training, we're going to give confidence to people that and the ability to deal with that situation and then still call us and we'll uh, follow up and get people back where they belong and and uh, properly taken care of but I think it's just a great opportunity to create awareness um, and provide education and confidence uh, to our, our business people and and throughout the community uh, through this program uh, as someone who's dealt with uh, dementia and Alzheimer's in my family the training is spot-on um, it's very well, uh, very well done, and, and uh, you know, I, as, as they were going through it, I could see my mother-in-law, uh, you know, as, as they were describing it. And so, um, you know, and the techniques that we used were, you know, very much what, uh, what was uh, described. So, uh, great program, and I think it's a great addition uh, to the community. Fantastic. Well, uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, board, any questions? Uh, Ms. Trent. Comment. Um, yes, uh, that was a great presentation, and as a caregiver since 2018 for my uh, stepdad and my mother, I can see how um, this is so beneficial, because it is an eye-opener when you start seeing the decline. Neither one of them had dementia. My mother-in-law did. Chief Cheltenham and his team took care of her, and they, she stayed in her home because of the help of the city of Rochester. And, and uh, a lot of firemen would show up and help my stepdad, and I'll go to them as well, to get back into bed. That was That's how they, he'd fall out, and no one could get him back. And I just didn't realize how much we would be relying on the fire department. And, and, had an, and, and it's an excellent program to train them to how do you manage the they're different. They are thinking different. Even if they don't have dementia, they're not thinking uh, the same, and they can lash out. But anyway, thank you, Chief Shelton Hamigam, and your team, and uh, for helping my mother-in-law. It was a it was a it was a, a great team effort. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Tony. Keith and Sarah, great job. How do you train? Like, how do you how will you train the different businesses in town? We have like seminars or. So, um, so um, 
It would be up to the specific business. It can be any, you know, for the police department and the fire department because they're so hands-on, they're responding to these calls. We did do about about a two-hour session, lots of hands-on, a little bit more in-depth about why, why you're seeing the changes you see. But for example, if it's maybe a coffee shop or an ice cream shop downtown, we could probably do 45 minutes and focus a little bit more on if somebody is coming in and they seem kind of off and they're forgetful, how do you handle that situation? Because um, like Chief was talking about, you know, startling a patient with dementia or getting them, getting them more anxious is the last thing you want to do because once you get them in that cycle, it's very hard to get them out. So it's all about responding in a calm manner and um, responding in a way that's going to keep the person calm. It, it would it could be as simple as that. Just want to add one other thing, and I know there's some uh, long-term business owners here in Rochester, and those businesses aren't here anymore, but the thing that I learned uh, most about dementia was long-term memory stays, short-term memory goes away. So, um, Chris, if somebody walked in to your restaurant and said, where are the gift cards? You'd say, what do you mean gift cards? Well, I remember that used to be LaBelle's card shop, mm -hmm. right? And so somebody who had... You know that that's a long time ago. They may be confused when they come into your shop and to ask for something where you're going like, "What? What are you crazy? I, this is a restaurant or this is a coffee shop. It's not what it used to be." But to them, their memory says this is what this place used to be, and so just learning how to deal with those questions or helping to settle out the confusion and those things all are important, right? And, uh, from that standpoint, so. You know, I, I think you know the customization that she did, her team did for police and fire because of what we deal with. Sounds like you could do the same yeah. for the businesses. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Oh, Madam Director. So, um, I think the reason this was all brought forward from uh, John and Steve is that they wanted to see if we would be on board for the business component because this really would be a city program that we would support in terms of the application would be coming from. City of Rochester, not from DBA necessarily. So I think if tonight everyone, this is something that you're interested in, we should pursue, then I'm happy to work with John and Steve to start putting this together and then bringing it to the next level. Got it, yeah, fantastic. Is that right, you guys? Yeah, sweet. Yeah, okay. yeah no, that's, okay, that, that's, okay. that's, that's kind of what I was mm -hmm. thinking as well. So I don't know if you've had this presentation to council yet or not, but I'm sure that uh, that not. will be Good forthcoming. Time. So uh, I think that that's the next logical step here, but um, uh, they're, uh, we're surrounded by no-brainers at all time, and this is a proverbial no-brainer for us. So we're happy to help in any way we can. Um, at least that's my indication <coughs> listening and looking around with the nodding of heads as if it looked the poodle in the back of the car or all doing one of these things. Uh, but, yeah, no, we're in. Let us know how we can help. Um, this is, you know, it's timely, um, and, uh, you know, we're all going through it at some level or another. So it's good to have that sort of... Uh, um, knowledge and and uh, and whatnot. So we'll definitely coordinate with the businesses and help on that end, um, and and support the city in this effort. And anything the chiefs say that we have to do, we're in on. So we're uh, we're good. So we will bring. Um, we'll invite Sarah to a council meeting, Mr. Mayor. If that's good, we'll get on the agenda. If that's uh, uh, good with you, <coughs> uh, make a presentation to city council to get their buy-in, uh, knowing that we have some support from local businesses. Uh, with you know. That, that's really the where the rubber meets the road, if you want to call it, you know, uh, acceptance by city council and approval, but then um, being able to implement it with uh, the interested businesses um, from that standpoint. And Sarah, I don't know that we have to have every business yeah. in town, but we could at least start with uh, the most, uh, with at least some of the businesses that are sitting here uh, on the committee or then others that are interested in. I'd be interested owning a tea room where 60 to 70 percent of our clientele are over the age of 60. So I think that would benefit us. Did uh, do we need a? I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Well, no, I was just going to say yes. We can bring it to City Council. You, you guys let let us know when. Sure. And of course, as some people know, I dealing with some of the same things myself. So yeah, it's, it's uh. It's pervasive. It's pervasive, it yes. Yeah, 100%. Now, yeah. did you need a formal uh, resolution uh, from us of support to send to council <laughs> or just uh, the general nodding of heads? And I mean, we've got between the liaison and the mayor, they're going to say, yeah, well, it came to DDA. And yeah, because there's really no expensive funds or yeah, anything yeah. like that. It'd be more just directing me okay. to, to go do this. So. All right. Well, we're in. Let us know how we can help. How's that? You, you just 
just started the ball rolling. All right, fantastic. <laughs> Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much you. for your presentation. We really yeah. appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Just uh, another shout out to Sarah and her team. I know the police and fire were kind of guinea <laughs> pigs, I think, from the first of the classes. Yeah. And, um, you know, to get uh, all of the fire guys to sit there and really pay attention and then afterwards come up and say, Chief, that was really great training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had to scratch my head a little bit, uh, but it, that's everybody did. It. They said it was some of the, the best medical training that we've ever had, and we've already had benefits. Oh, that's great. That training. That's so awesome. We yeah. We should treat some of our patients of right now. Yeah. We've already seen oh, great absolutely. results. So. Got it. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I so, think people... Yeah, she did imply, though, there was a lot of dementia at the police department, so I don't know what that was all about. But <laughs> <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> just one more yeah, thing. Yeah, for Chief Sislik as well, just the fire department, the Rochester Hills Fire Department was helping us. I just didn't realize how much you're, the LG, it's people age, you're depending on the fire department to help you so much. So yeah, totally. kudos well, I mean, to you if for bringing. think about it, fire departments, um, you know, 35% of our calls are fire related, 65% are EMS, and uh, as we see our call volume increasing, it's mainly because of the aging population, mm -hmm. and between Chief Steve and, and my team, our job is really to try to keep people in their homes and mm -hmm. take care of them, mm -hmm. so we spend an inordinate amount of time trying to help them out, everything from getting them back into bed, or you'd be surprised on how many times we'll go to somebody's house to get a family member from a car into the home or from the home into the car for doctor's appointments. And if we weren't doing that, that person probably wouldn't be at home anymore. They would have to be someplace in assisted living or whatever, or our residents would be having to pay for additional caregivers. So uh, we're proud to serve our residents. Yeah, I We're, we're lucky to have you, Chief, yeah. that's for sure. Um, Thank and you both. Also, just, I don't know if you guys thought of this, I'm sure you have, but OPC would probably be a natural um, reach out as well. So. Okay. Well, thanks so much for your presentation. We appreciate it. All righty. Oh, budget update. Oh, we're going from the, the good stuff to the not so good, good stuff. stuff, right? Okay. So, uh, I'm on my laptop. Just went to sleep here. So, what the hell? Come on, wake up. Uh, so, uh, budget-wise, um, the uh, budget was sent out, and then there was a, a follow-up on Monday because of the fifty thousand dollar contribution to. Um, uh, parking fund, which uh, we added back in, um, uh, council did approve us not having to pay for the parklet. So thank you for that. We appreciate it. Um, yeah, so the okay. offset, the net is ends up being just you know like 15 grand or whatever. So that was I, I think that as usual the partners uh, uh, you know saw fit to be partners and 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 we're very appreciative of that. So in your packet is the budget. It largely is what we had talked about. There is a summary that was sent out on Monday that I did, I'd try and go through and, and get rid of the um, 8 million account numbers that uh, the finance department is so proud of and, and to try and uh, thrift it down to something that's a little bit more manageable. But uh, bottom line is, is that uh, we're setting aside our fund balance, um, uh, the remainder of the fund balance in the 80-20 fashion that was discussed at um, um, Goals and Objectives. And uh, that ended up being uh, 371,442 set aside for, in theory, um, uh, the front porch project or you know an iteration thereof. And then 20%, uh, 92,000, just just under $100,000 is for site. Um, so that was in discussion with what you guys wanted, and that's the way it was submitted, and that's the way um, council. I don't think they've actually voted on the budget yet, but that was sort of the direction we're headed. So I guess from from this evening. Uh, I want to entertain any discussion or questions on the budget. If it's in good form, uh, we'd need a motion to uh, forward it in its final form to council for their consideration uh, when they do their budget. So, board, any discussion on the budget or authorization to submit it to council? So moved. Motion by the mayor. I'll second that. Support by Matt, uh, Marilyn Trent. Um, I don't. We don't need a voice vote for this, do we? Because we're not spending it. Well, we technically we're spending money. So I guess we'll do. Yeah, yeah, we'll do a voice vote. So, um, uh, so with that, uh, a voice vote, uh, Madam Recording Secretary. Lisa Germani Williams. Yes. Tony Carsten. Yes. Tony Yes. Chris Johnson. Yes. Eric Diana. Yes. Roger Knapp. Yes. Marilyn Trent. Yes. Paul Haig. Yes. Eric Vixen. Yes. Chairman Giovanelli. Yes. 
All right, unanimously approved and forwarded to council. So uh, once again, thanks for uh, your efforts uh, in helping us out on the uh, parklets. I, are they going out? It's going to be 80 on Sunday. So I, uh, <laughs> not quite. Usually outdoor dining in the city starts uh, beginning of May. <laughs> Medicare, well, I know that's not going to be on 4th Street. So. Correct. Yeah. Not quite yet. <laughs> right. I have one question. Uh, yes, sir. What is rented land besides the building? Rented land, is that the building? Uh, that's the in? building, yeah. That's just, that's the, we don't the, have additional rent. No, uh, no, it's, it's just the name of the account. I probably should have sanitized <coughs> that, but it's a, a legacy from uh, days gone by. So it's, uh, I think that account has probably been named that for a good 40 years. So. Uh, but it's just the rent on the, on the office, or on, the, um, uh, on our main, main office. Um, uh, Fourth Street reconstruction update, transitioning into that, Madam Director. Yeah. So um, Nick is out uh, sick this week. But um, we have Patrick Ryan, the DPW director, send an update, which I put at everyone's place tonight. Um, essentially, it just says that um, work is going along as scheduled. The water main has been replaced, and business is reconnected already on 4th Street in the downtown stretch, Good. which is great. Uh, only ran into one snafu. The old plans for the city showed that Chase Bank got their water from Main Street. Uh, they found out the hard way that they do not. They got it from 4th Street. Oh, dear. Okay. So when they got the call saying they had the water. <laughs> so Oopsie. We were able to fix that. So other than that, uh, everything is going along, and they're still on target to meet our July 14th deadline for five months. Fantastic. Uh, no Indian burial grounds yet? So mm -hmm. No. Okay, That's great. That's other side of Main Street. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Yes. For oh. those that know, you know. Dogs or something. My goodness. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, so is there any questions with respect to the construction on 4th Street from the board? Uh, seeing none, thank you for your report. We appreciate it. Um, uh, May 18th, uh, DDA board meeting. I'm sorry. Yes. I did. Yeah. Oh. And it, it's because I'm on it. I didn't want to talk about it. No, I'm kidding you. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I apologize. Uh, the Main Street Open County update. This is an event that you and I attended on uh, St. Patty's Day. Uh, yes, so okay. there was the summit, and then there's the other side. With Got the it. Okay, go. Up. So if you want to hit summit. Please, please carry on. Oh, do you want to hit summit, and I can do the other? Uh, so I want you to get it started, and I'll support you. How's that? <laughs> so um, Oakland County, we and we've talked about this before. During the last two years with COVID support, the county had a lot of different programs, and they gave money to a lot of different types of groups, the exception being DDAs. For some reason, DDAs didn't meet the criteria of wanting to have a special grant program that even Chambers had certain programs where they were able to get funding um, to fill in the gaps from when they couldn't collect memberships and things like that. So uh, Main Street County led by our friend John Bry, who we see here and his team um, put together what he called an Oakland, Main Street Oakland County Summit, invited um, chairman and directors from um, all the different Main Street Oakland County communities to meet with the upper leadership of um, Coulter's office to find out from all of us, the people on the street, what's going on here, programs that we did, challenges that we faced, and where we might see some great improvements and some ways that they could support us. I would say placemaking came up quite a bit. Um, there was a real mix in terms of the communities talking about where they were in terms of coming out of the pandemic, if they were better, if they were worse, if everybody was we're still running into staffing challenges, things like that. But it seemed like each community, depending on how much effort they put in at the front end, that their end game was very different. So um, I think that was yeah, uh, yeah, no. But aside from it being on St. Patty's Day, which was actually pretty funny, yeah. but uh, no, it was a great presentation. Uh, County Executive uh, Coulter, um, you know, greet. It was literally every DDA in Oakland County, just about, and plus others like Birmingham is not a DDA, but they're so they had representation there. So it was a great mix of everybody and just sort of a, 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 a general dialogue of how they've been dealing with it into a person to Christie's point um, everybody got you know cares act money except for the DDA so we were sort of left to scramble on our own and, it, and we all know that what what this board ended up having to do um, but the uh, the bottom line for everybody is that to a person we all stepped up and provided the resources that we had and um, uh, you know, and the results sort of speak for themselves. Here we are, right? So um, I, I think that the, from the network opportunity, it was just nice to, to see that others were sharing the same pain that we were sharing and, and providing some, uh, you know, glimmers of hope coming out of COVID. So uh, it was a great, and I really appreciated, you know, John's always, you know, done really good stuff for us. And we appreciate the, uh, the support we get from the county. So it was good. Um, aside from that, really, that was sort of the takeaway is that uh, we're all getting past it to Christie's point. Some are getting more past it than others. There's still some fear out there, but, uh, you know, um, we're being uh, uh, 
responsible and but also trying to be realistic as to what's going on so uh, any other thing on that did I miss Not from the summit but then I can go yeah you can do the other ones I didn't okay. go there oh yeah please I thought I saw something in there about um, the fact that they recommended that we uh, promote more of the downtown development, uh, our accomplishments and achievements. Do I remember that being? <coughs> so that yes. was something when John was here last month. He did say that uh, I think it will start in 23. Um, our Main Street evaluation, our accreditation that we do, one of the things will be will be evaluated on how well we get the message out about what we're doing in the community. I don't anticipate that we're going to have an issue clicking that box because we, we do like to self-promote. Uh, but I think we're going to be a little bit more cognizant of when those things happen to record those things, save those articles, save those videos and those links and things so that we're able to produce those. Um, I don't think that was talked about necessarily at the summit. The summit, I think we were really focusing on <coughs> ways that the county could be supporting DDAs in our efforts to help our businesses. The only reason I brought that up is because the, the, this DDA is, is so valuable to not only Rochester, Rochester Hills, and Oakland Township, and the values of their homes. I mean, there's a reason why these homes are continue to be worth more than a, a comparable home in, I'm not putting these towns down, but in Oxford or Orion or something like that, or Pontiac, is because, you know, people want to live close to this downtown. And yet, you know, we have a pretty good sized budget, and, and other people start looking at that and say, hey, you know, maybe we should have some of that budget. And I, you know, so we just, we always want to make sure that we stay real, uh, pot, you know, real, uh, people look very favorable on the DDA. There was a time that it was, this, we had to sell that, you know, a long time ago. And we had to go to the school board and said, yes, this is why, you know, we're here. So I, you know, I hope we just keep, keep that going. I do think you do a good job of that, but. I think that's just so important. Absolutely. Well, we can always do more and we can always do better. And now that we know it's going to be something we're evaluated on, how I feel about that accreditation. Yeah, I know. We got to get that point. <laughs> Yeah, the main the main message there is to get the word out and make sure that people understand, you know, um, the contributions made. And um, as part of our measurement criteria, we have to do it. So uh, we'll, like I said, I know a good marketing team that has, uh, it is not shy. So I think we'll be fine in that regard. Uh, any other? <clears throat> Okay, go to the other one. Okay, so then the other half of this, um, at our February meeting, we talked, I had put in the award application. So the Main Street Main event, for anyone who's new to the board, this is an annual event that they do. They haven't done it for the last two years because of COVID, but they have an event in Pontiac, typically, because it's the county seat, where they invite all the Main Streets to submit awards. Typically, they were awards for standout events board members, initiatives, what have you, for the previous year, but because they haven't had it for a few years, this one was more reflection back of any people, initiatives, promotions, efforts that were a hallmark of the last two years, really focusing on the COVID years. So um, through that, we went through and I worked with John on some ideas of what we might be able to apply for. So we applied, ended up with everyone's input here, plus from John's recommendations, we applied for three categories. The first one is Main Street Safe, and we nominated the Downtown Collaboration Studio and all of the things that we did from the PPE kits, the local masks, all those kinds of things going through there. Uh, we did Main Street Open, which was focusing on a specific promotion for a business category. So we nominated Foodie February, which we won the national award for. And so we put Foodie February 4th as a nomination for that. And then the overall campaign for Main Street, of course, we put forward Love Local Rochester, because how could we not? And then there is a spirit of Main Street video, and for some reason we decided we'd throw our hat in the ring for that too. It has to be something that we have to self-produce, a two- to three-minute video. Several people here were in the video, so thank you for that. <laughs> um, that's getting uploaded tomorrow to the county once I finish editing it tonight, so <laughs> that'll be done. So those four awards um, we have been nominated for. So that leads me to, if everybody saw my email, and here it is again, I know that Marilyn had emailed me that she would like to join us, and a few people off PSD, Amanda is coming with us as well. If anyone would like to join us at the Main Street Main event, it's on May 5th, it's in Pontiac at the Strand. Uh, email me or let me know tonight, and then I'll get everybody registered and uh, take care of the tickets. So just let me know, it's from six to nine. They try to keep it light and fun, and there's usually good food. Yeah, this stuff's last time I was there. It was right. very nice. Yeah, yeah, it was very nice. Very well done. I'm going to try and go. All right, so uh, any questions on that? Oh, oh side note, it says black tie optional. It is not that fancy. Oh, dear. They try to make it that fancy, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so if you walked in with an uh, Abe Lincoln pipe stove pipe hat and a powdered wig. Yeah, don't, don't do it. Got it. <clears throat> yeah. 
All right, and I'm doing it definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so let me know. All right, very good. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Uh, did I skip anything else? No, is that the only one? Okay. <laughs> I'm glad people are watching me. You guys are watching me like a hawk, so this is good. Uh, all right, so, G, uh, May 18th, so next, uh, next month's board meeting. So uh, we are going to be like, we're going to have nobody in town for the next. So, <laughs> so here's what's happening. So um, our next board meeting would be May 18th. However, uh, that is going to be the National Main Streets Conference. Jenna and I will be in attendance of that, in addition to Chris, and then uh, Amber Luciano from the Proceeds Committee. Um, so we'll be in Richmond, Virginia. We're not coming back until the next day. Uh, Taylor would usually then be able to cover, well, normally Taylor would be with us, but then we're like, oh, Taylor will be home because it's her wedding week. So Taylor's getting married that week. So she will not be in the office either. So that also is a note in my director's report. Don't look for much out of the DDA office the week of May 15th because we're just not here. Uh, so there's no one to manage it unless we want to ask Nick to manage it on behalf of staff. I'm so, good. Yep, that's the information the executive committee gave me. So we thought we'd bring it here and see if anyone feels any kind of way that we could skip May and then just push to June, or if you'd really like to put Mr. Banda through that. So, uh, it, it, exactly. that was last month. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's his party. Uh, so, gift at is. executive committee, I mean, <laughs> so I, I asked Christy to kind of accelerate everything moving forward into tonight's agenda. So that way, there was nothing that was time sensitive for May. So, it, has anything changed in that regard? Mm -hmm. All right. So, there's nothing time sensitive. Uh, so my inclination is to go ahead and uh, cancel the, the DDA uh, May meeting. Do we need uh, to make a motion? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's just the, just the, okay. it's just the chair's no, prerogative. You don't, you don't have bylaws that require you to have a monthly meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we just have to have a certain number for the state. Right. That's all. I think we do. But I don't know. Oh, um, uh, we've I think that when we've we read before. through this, because I know we had to get deep into DDA law a couple years ago because... Yeah. They're doing different things in the state. We have to, if I'm not mistaken, have a minimum of nine meetings a year. Yeah, that, that was what I recall, too, because we've canceled meetings in, in yeah. uh, for, yes. you know, even just, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, once again, so I asked her to make sure that everything was moved forward to tonight that needed, that was time sensitive, that and that did happen. Uh, there's nothing really lingering. So, unless everybody's got a burner to come here and hang out on a Monday or on a Wednesday uh, in the middle of May, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, cancel and then regroup uh, in June. Uh, for another fun-filled, action-packed DDA board meeting in oh, June. Forward to it. The that, 15th, then? Uh, that'd be good. Yes, yeah. I think so. Whatever that, whatever day that is, I don't even know. June 15th. And I think this is actually going to work out good because I think I, I'm going to be going to get my kid home from college that week, so I, I probably are going to be on the road as well. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, that time of the year, right? So, all right, that's it. Uh, regular reports. Uh, executive director update. Um, just highlighting a few things in my report, uh, Michigan Municipal League, they, uh, instead of coming and making the formal presentation and saying, here's your dividend check, they just sent it in the mail. I feel like they know that we get that from them. So we had paid our um, premium, and then we got a $1,700 rebate okay. on that. So that's already, I gave that to Anthony, so that's being taken care of. Um, I did mention about week of May 15th, uh, Jen and I are presenting at the National Conference this year, which we're pretty excited be about. Fun. Yeah. And uh, Chris, who's been before, is going to be joining us. I am not presenting. He is not presenting. <laughs> <laughs> Moral support, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Jen and I are uh, presenting on small batch promotion, so we're going to focus on things we did during COVID, like uh, Foodie February, the Cookie Stroll, Taste of Fall, uh, No Filter, things like that. Fantastic. So that's all going. As a matter of fact, No Filter I didn't include in my report. Uh, two weeks from Monday, this last Monday, uh, we'll start doing registration for that, and those uh, 50 cameras sold out the first day last time, and I anticipate the same this year. So yes, I saw the note come across social, so good stuff. So we're very excited about that. So that's for me, and then I could roll into events and marketing. Um, the decks for deck art are rolling into our place. We have 450 registered deck artists this year. Holy moly. We usually get maybe 10% that, for some reason, don't return their decks, but that's still a lot, a lot. of decks. <laughs> so we are working on getting those in, and uh, tomorrow night and Friday night, we're open till 8 o'clock. Usually, based on what we have in and what is still coming, we are expecting about 300-plus decks oh dear. over the next two days. It's fine. <clears throat> We've got some volunteers coming in. We're buying them pizza and then welcoming them to Deckard Thunder Door, so it should be great. 
Um, and then <laughs> magazines went out. They started hitting homes last Friday. So if you haven't seen it in your home, I did bring these. Um, this is the cover contest that we did. We had this mod vibe on some things because that's sort of a trend that's going on right now. So we asked, put out a call for artists if they wanted to submit the mm -hmm. mod mm -hmm. plus Rochester mm -hmm. theme cover. Uh, this half of the artist for this one is Tim Grilewski. He's done uh, two murals in our Magical Mural Tour over the last couple years. Uh, and he's actually from Rochester Hills, so we're excited to feature that. But I think it's on balance to really fun magazine, and uh, Taylor and the team did a great job with it. So I just want to yes, sure raise attention if they haven't seen it. If you need more copies, feel free to stop by the studio. They are going quickly because we have a big mod window display advertising them. And then uh, registrations for Duck in the Trunk will open May 2nd. So those notices, since the magazine kept word again calls for people for spaces for junk. Uh, farmer's Market, we are rolling on opening May 7th. We are a full market for opening day, and actually we're a full market all season. We just have a few little spots open here and there fill. for people needing that. So we're excited about that, and I think that's everything under marketing and events. But I do have a miscellaneous once we get there. Got it. Uh, busy, <laughs> busy, busy, as usual, ramping up to spring. So I think that uh, folks are going to be stumbling out uh, this weekend. It's supposed to be gorgeous, and uh, so uh, should be at full strength this weekend. So it'll be fantastic. Uh, Biz Dev? Uh, we ended up canceling yesterday's meeting because okay. we had a few scheduling conflicts with committee members. Got it. That one. So uh, they'll be meeting again in, in early May because they're moving off that week because usually Biz Dev moves the same day as DDA. So yep. we'll be moving that week. Got it. Uh, got it, got it. Uh, site dev? Nothing really, just uh, the walk through town with the site committee in the next month, month and a half. It's my, it's my favorite walk. It's breakfast, get a little it's coffee, morning. go hang out with the chief, and uh, step up the us. politeness. Nice. <laughs> Got to step up the politeness. Okay, so uh, very good. All right, that uh, sort of accomplishes all of that agenda. Uh, miscellaneous, Madam Director. Yes, so um, at your table, you will find a letter on Love Local Letterhead. So uh, I'm working with Anthony and they um, are working with um, Alyssa Slotkin, who they, she's been shepherding us through the process that they are, uh, the federal government has funds available through different departments. So she put together a great website with a list of the different projects. You could put in a one-sheeter that she had created um, with what we are looking for for our projects, and then she, her staff vetted them to say which ones would be eligible. City of Rochester um, submitted two one-sheeters, one for Community House that I believe Blaine is working on, and then I submitted the uh, front porch project or town square piece of that front porch project. Um, so from that, they approved that both of those would be qualified for grants. Um, specifically, ours is under the Economic Development Initiative, which is at the top of our thing. And these are federal funds. This is under the um, Department of Housing and Urban Development. So one of the things we need to go along with this, it's, it's interesting, it's a Google form that you have to fill out. So it's not terribly intense as for some grants that I have looked at. Um, but they request that for the project organization, which would be DDA, that they write a letter of support. So um, it's a pretty quick turnaround. We've already gotten all of our other ducks in a row for this. Um, it is for a full coverage of funds. So we are asking for the full 1.7. I think, I'd like to think that we're going to get it, but the city just added um, Alyssa Slotkin's office with her help just got the funding for the All Abilities Park of almost $800,000. Yeah, so I don't know if they're going to award it yeah. for Rochester, but darn it, we're putting What's together. What's going on in Rochester? Why are they getting all these funds, right? So. so we're putting together a pretty amazing presentation. Again, I'm working with Anthony and Marcy, who were okay. successful in getting the All Abilities Park grants. They're helping me with this one. Um, so I drafted a quick letter of support. If everyone's comfortable with this, um, Susan has it so she can put it into the record, but if everyone wants to take a peek at it, and I did take the liberty of putting Ben's name at the bottom of hey it. Hey, man, whatever. Like to sign one, <laughs> that would be grand. But, yeah, nope. Um, that's, so this uh, all goes in, like I said, it's a quick turnaround. We got approval last week for it to be able to be eligible. It's going in this Friday for consideration. Okay, so from us, from the board, you would need a motion to uh, um, authorize me to sign this uh, in support of this uh, going after this grant. I'll make a motion. Uh, motion by Haig. I'll second. Support by, well, Lisa. jump also, Lisa Germani Williams. <laughs> Ladies first. Uh, no, okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Good luck. Sign one. Before you well, one. She, okay. <laughs> I, need that. I, just I, signed, I signed it in purple pen. Is that okay? I don't care. Okay. It's, all right. I'll leave this for. Uh, I think it's reference. 
Yeah, I would uh, uh, copy the resolution and, yes, and uh, yes, 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 it's I'll tell him. Please. Well, I can just incorporate yeah. my to see it. Okay, come on. You, you know, he's not judgmental. Yeah. He's not a judgmental man, okay. so. All right, fingers and legs crossed and toes and whatever else. We'll, uh, uh, any other miscellaneous? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, just um, at the last city council meeting, we had a representative from Oakland County out, and they did commit, and I think Christy was there, <clears> to being back and funding and supporting Fire and Ice. Oh, sweet. So we thought that might have been going away, but they committed in public, uh, in my view, that they're coming back, they're going to fundraise for the fireworks, they're going to bring back all their stuff. <coughs> so I thought that was very positive. That is very positive. That's good. As a follow to that, the next day, um, Dave Vanderveen, who you may have heard us speak of, that he was a deputy under Brooks Patterson, um, he had retired last year. They found a way to keep him around. So Dave is still our contact. Okay. And so he called me the next day to confirm exactly what the mayor just shared. So he's excited to work with us. So um, in true Fire Nice form, we will uh, start meeting in October. Um, Parks and Rec is the department at Oakland County that takes the lead on it. Bring the party. So That's awesome. Yeah. Excited. Bring the fire. Bring the ice. We're, uh, we're ready to go, right? There, so. there aren't many Brooks Patterson people left. Yeah, right. <laughs> One. Yeah. <laughs> Hen's teeth, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, anything else? All right. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>